Thanks for joining me today for a STEAM adventure. I'm Lisa with the Anacortes Public Library and today we are going to talk about water, what sinks and what floats and maybe why. So water is one of the rare things in our world that can exist as a liquid, right? Like a glass of water you would drink or water in a lake or a river or the ocean. But if we heat that water up to the point where it boils, if we were gonna make a nice cup of tea or boil some water to cook some pasta, water becomes a gas. We call it steam, right? Sometimes you'll see those little steamy wisps coming off the top of a cup of something hot. And water, if we cool it way down to the point where it freezes, it becomes ice right? So it's a solid. It can be a liquid, a gas, and a solid. So cool. And water is something that we use every day. We drink it, we cook with it, we take showers in it or baths, right? We play in it. If you go to the swimming pool or maybe a park with a spray pad, we need it to grow our food. We need our water to live. Water is so important. But today we're going to talk about things that float in the water and things that sink in the water. And so I have some things. You can gather these things at home. I have a bowl of water. You might have a plastic tub or you could use the bathtub. Uh, a Tupperware container, you might have a big glass bowl, anything, or a bucket, anything you can fill with water will work. And I've gathered some things that you might have at home, like an egg, a rock, an eraser, a cotton ball, a wooden block, an orange, and I have some other things on here too. I have some plastic toys, I have a paper clip, some pennies, a cork, a marble. Anything that you have at home that is small enough to fit in your container will work. And you can do some experimenting to find out will it float or will it sink? Okay? So in order to do that, we're gonna put on our invisible scientist hat. And when we are scientists, we are noticing things, right? We're watching and we're seeing what happens. We're looking at things, noticing the shape of them, noticing how heavy something is, right? So we're observing. And then scientists also t make predictions. They guess to see, hmm, this egg feels pretty heavy. Do I think this egg is going to float in the water? or do I think it's going to sink? So we make a guess, and then scientists test it out to see what happens. And that's how they prove their theories. So let's put on our invisible scientist hat and get started, okay? So I'm gonna start with something small, like this paper clip. So this paper clip does not weigh very much, it's pretty light, and I can see that it's shiny. I know that it's made of metal. What do we think might happen with this paper clip when we drop it in the water? Shall we find out? Here we go. It sank right to the bottom. So even though that paper clip was not heavy, it went right to the bottom of the bowl. I'm gonna fish it out with my hands. You might also want to have some paper towel handy and a towel underneath your water container. Okay, there's my paper clip. I've made two paper plates, one that says float and one that says sink, so I can separate out my items. And remember, this one sank, so I'm gonna put it on my sink plate right there. So even though it wasn't heavy, it sank. Hmm, let's try something else. How about this cute little, whoop, is it gonna squeak for me, this little rubber duck? There it goes, squeak, squeak. So this little rubber duck weighs about the same as this paper clip. It is not very heavy. 
So what do we think this little rubber duck might do? Do we think it might sink or float? Let's find out. I'm gonna set it in the water. Oh, so my rubber duck floats, just like a real duck floats on the top of the water. <laughs> we'll let that little duck float around in there for a while because it's so cute. Let's try something else. How about, so this is another little plastic toy. This is a little plastic turtle. Ooh, and I have a little plastic dinosaur too. So these aren't very heavy. The, di the dinosaur is a little bit lighter than the turtle, but the turtle feels pretty solid. It's heavier than that rubber duck. So let's see what happens when we put these in the water. These are both made out of plastic, same as our rubber duck. Let's see what happens. Oh, that one went right to the bottom. I think I know what's gonna happen with this turtle because this one's even heavier. Right to the bottom. Hmm. So I wonder why the rubber duck is floating, but the turtle and the dinosaur are not if they are made out of the same thing and they are all pretty light. So one of the things I learned about water when I was getting ready to make this video is that it's not just how heavy something is that makes something sink or float, it's how dense it is. So everything in our whole world is made up of tiny little particles called molecules. And in some things, those molecules are far apart and there are maybe just a few of them, like air. Air is made up of molecules, but they're far apart and there aren't very many close together. But in something like this turtle, the molecules are closer together and there are a lot of them close together and that makes this turtle more dense or more solid. So water has its own density. And if something is more dense than water, it will sink in water. But if something is less dense than water, like this rubber duck, this rubber duck has some air in it, it will float on the top of water. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna put our rubber duck on our float plate and I'm gonna put our dinosaur and our turtle on our sink plate. So let's try some other things. All right, I think you are gonna know, you're gonna be able to predict what happens with this rock. This isn't a very big rock, but it feels pretty solid. What do you think will happen? Shall we see? I'm gonna drop it in right to the bottom. Did you guess that? So if you guessed that it would sink and then you tested it out and it did sink, you proved your theory to be true. Let's try something else. This is a cork that you might find from a bottle at home and corks are pretty light. It doesn't feel as solid as the rock. Shall we see what happens? Let's see. Oh, it floats right on top. I'm guessing that cork doesn't have as many molecules in it as the rock. And maybe it has more air in it than the rock. I'll put this on our float plate. And I'll put the rock on our sink plate. There we go. All right. I've got a wooden block. Maybe you have a wooden block at home. You might have seen wood at the beach, maybe driftwood, and so you might have a guess about what this wood will do in the water. Shall we see if it sinks or floats? It's pretty heavy, this is a pretty heavy block, but let's see. Look at that, it floats. So we know that wood is less dense than water. Almost all wood will float take our block out and put it on our float plate. All right, let's see. Here's a big Duplo block. Maybe you have some Legos at home. It's made of plastic, not very heavy. Let's see. It floats just like our plastic ducky and our cork and our wood. So we know this Lego 
plastic is not very dense, right? It probably is less dense than our turtle or our dinosaur. All right, I've got an eraser. Feels pretty solid. See what happens. Right to the bottom. How about a penny? You might have a penny or another coin at home. We know this is made of metal like our paper clip, right? It's not very heavy. Let's see what happens. Right to the bottom. So we know that it's dense, even though it's not very heavy, the molecules in that penny are close together and there are a lot of them, more dense than water. I'm gonna do an orange. So you can try this with an orange or a lemon at home and see what, or other kinds of fruit. Scientists try different things and they try lots of things and they try again and again and again to see what they learn. So I was surprised by this. Did you think that orange would float? It's floating right on the top of the water, even though this orange weighs more than our penny, right? It's bigger, it's heavier. This orange must have some air in it somewhere inside. So I'm gonna put our penny on our sink plate and I'm gonna try another experiment with our orange. What happens if I peel the orange? So I know that the peel of an orange is kind of light and it looks like it has some, maybe some air in the skin of it. So I'm gonna peel that skin right off and then we're gonna see what happens with our orange. Do you have a prediction or a guess about what might happen? Do you think it will sink or float? Shall we see? Here we go. Oh, you know what? It went to the bottom. It took a little time, but it sank to the bottom. So without its skin, that orange will sink. That skin must have been holding some air in there. All right, I'm gonna take these out and put them on our sink plate. Okay. Let's try this. I've got a cotton ball. So this is really light, really fluffy. I think there's a lot of air in here. So let's see what happens. It floats. But another thing about cotton balls is that they absorb, right? They soak up liquid. So what happens if I get my cotton ball wet? I'm gonna poke it down in the water and see. Poking it down holding it down there under the water. And I see some air bubbles coming off. Can you see what's happening? Now my cotton ball is under the water. And if I poke it down, it doesn't quite go all the way to the bottom. It still wants to bob up to the top. What if I squeeze it out and then really let it soak up some water? Oh, now it goes to the bottom. So it absorbed so much water that it sank. Isn't that crazy? Okay, I brought a sponge with me and we know that sponges have lots of air because we can see all the little holes in them. So let's see what happens with our sponge. I'm gonna float it this way so we can see. So that floats on the top. I kind of knew that sponge, I guessed that that sponge would float. But now the sponge is absorbing water and it's sitting a little lower in the water. I'm gonna do the same trick. Oh, and our cotton ball has floated back up. I'm gonna do the same trick I did with our cotton ball. I'm gonna squeeze it all out and then hold it under water so it soaks it all up and see what happens. Okay, so our sponge still wants to float and our cotton ball came back up. So maybe those things have enough air in them and they are less dense than water. So even when they are full of water, they want to float. All right, I'm gonna put those on our float plate. All right, there's our sponge. There's our very wet cotton ball. Put that over there. Okay, I have a fun trick to try to show you. I've got a marble. This marble is pretty heavy. It weighs about as much as this rock. 
and it's not going to absorb water because it's made out of glass. So let's see what happens with our marble, shall we? Right to the bottom. So we know that that marble is dense. But what if I take some bubble wrap, take my marble out and dry it off a little bit, and I'm gonna wrap my marble in this bubble wrap making some good squeaky noises. And I have some tape. And I'm gonna tape that bubble wrap on there. And let's see what happens. So I've made this bigger, right? The marble still weighs the same as it did before. It's still just as heavy. What do you think will happen when we put it in the water with the bubble wrap? Let's find out. It floats. Is that what you thought would happen? So what did we add to the marble so that it floats now? Do you know what's inside all these little bubbles in the bubble wrap? It's air. We added air to our marble, enough air so that our marble floats. I thought that was pretty neat and I think that this is partly why some big heavy things float out on the ocean. So maybe you've seen some big heavy boats out there made of metal. How do those float in the water? Maybe they have some air in them somewhere that's helping them float. I'm gonna put this over on our float plate. Okay, what else? We're, I have a couple more experiments I wanna show you. I'm gonna move this bowl out of the way and put these two glasses here. So these are just both filled with regular water and I brought in an egg and the egg is pretty heavy. It feels pretty dense and solid. Let's see what happens when we put it in the water. You see that? It goes all the way to the bottom. Okay. I'm gonna fish my egg out. I think I brought a little spoon with me. Where is that spoon? There we go. I'm gonna fish my egg out and sit it right here. And I brought some salt with me. And salt is a mineral. We use it on our food to make it taste good. And it is something that dissolves in water. So I'm gonna pour some salt in my little measuring spoon into this other glass. There's one tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons. You can see the water starting to look a little cloudy from the salt in there. Four tablespoons. Let's do one more. We'll do five tablespoons of salt. And I'm gonna stir that up. Oops, my lights went out a little bit. I'm gonna stir it up until it dissolves, right? There's no salt left on the bottom of the glass. Might take a little while. Stir, 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 stir. Okay, so now if I taste this water, oh, it's real, oh my gosh, it's really salty. <laughs> Much saltier than the ocean. Okay put the egg in my salt water and see what happens. Can you see that? Can you see that the egg is floating on the top of the water? So the egg weighs the same. It's just as dense as it was before, but something changed with our water to help that egg float. We changed the density of the water. So we added salt and it dissolved in there partially and that made the water more dense so that our egg, it's pushing up against our egg and lifting it up. So now the egg is less dense than the salt water. But if we put our egg back in the regular water, straight to the bottom. Hmm. I thought that was kind of a neat little experiment. All right, I'm gonna fish my egg out. We'll put that on our sink plate. 
Okay, and I have a couple more experiments. I have one with a penny. Let's do that one. Here's another one that helps explain why some of those big ships you see on the ocean might float. So here's our penny. Remember, our penny sinks, right? Even though it's not very big, it's dense. It's made of metal. I'm going to take some aluminum foil, and you probably have this at home. We use it for cooking and baking and covering things. And I'm going to tear off a little sheet and make a little rectangle out of it. And then I'm going to fold the edges up. I kind of make a little, a little flat boat out of this aluminum foil. Fold the edges up. Fold the edges up. All right. I'm going to fish my penny out. Okay. And I'm going to put my penny on my flat boat. Now, what do we think? The penny weighs the same, right? Still metal, still dense. What happens when we put it in the water on our flat piece of aluminum foil? It floats. Now, why does that float? The aluminum foil is spreading out the weight of the penny over more surface of the water. So the water has more to push up against and that helps the penny float. That's another reason why those giant ships float in the ocean. They're so big and they push, displace so much water around them that the water is strong enough to lift them up. Amazing. All right, I hope you have fun experimenting at home. You can use anything you find and just see what you notice about water and sinking and floating. I have a bunch of books at the library that I want to just show you a couple of them if you want to continue to do experiments and learn more about water. There's so many wonderful books here. This is a story about water and it talks about how water can be liquid and gas and solid. We've got a couple of really great books. This is where I got a lot of these experiment ideas from. Let's try it out in the water and fundamental experiments with water. Those are both really wonderful. Here's another great one, Down Comes the Rain, all about the water cycle, how the water on Earth keeps getting recycled over and over. And then we've got lots of books about how to be a scientist and what that means, and lots of fun stories about water. This one's about animals waiting to get a drink at a water hole. So come in and check out some of those books. And I made you a science sheet to go along with this. If you want to try this at home, I'll put this in the comments below and you can print it out at home. It tells you everything you need to do all of these experiments. And then on the back side, all the books that you might want to take a look at at the library and a couple of websites you might want to visit to learn more about water. And I'm going to encourage you to visit our website at library.cityofanacortes.org to find out about all of our fun things that we have happening this summer for summer reading. And if you haven't already checked out a STEAM kit, we have STEAM kits at the library. So this one is Duplos, it's a big, block, uh, big box of blocks. Uh, but we have rock painting kits, we have make your own bath bomb kits, we have puzzles, and we have more kits on the way. So take a look at those next time you're in the library. All right? Have fun experimenting with water. Take care.